Good afternoon. Thanks for taking time out of your busy days to come and see if we could um, accomplish more by do less this afternoon. I want to start with a couple minutes of sitting quietly. So I would ask that everyone put everything away, if you'll bear with me. And let's just begin by arriving here in the room and see, um, I suggest keeping your eyes open, just looking down, and start by taking a couple of deep breaths, just being here. Notice that breathing happens even at work, even here at Google, breathing. Body, we're, we're all here in our bodies. And just take a quick check-in with yourself where um, notice gravity keeping you in your seat, feet on the floor. Just let yourself feel your heart beating, the flow of energy going through you. Great, let's all, let's all come on back. Thank you for 60 seconds, a 60 second meditation. You know, this reminds me, I, I once was asked to uh, facilitate a retreat of CEOs who came in from all around the country who were in a particular, um, they were in an organization that was trying to make some really difficult strategic decisions. And I came in during the middle of this three-day retreat, and I was asked to, do, to lead a, a couple-hour session. And as I was walking in, someone pulled me aside and said, things are going really badly here. There's, um, there's a lot of disagreement about the strategy. They just fired the last facilitator. Welcome. Um, that, that was my, my introduction. And I came in, and I... I said, oh, we're going to do 15 minutes of meditation. And I could see about a third of these CEOs came racing up to the front of the room and sat down. Another third kind of were willing to go along, and, and I could see I had their attention. And a third of them were in the back with their arms like that. And we sat together for about 15 minutes. And um, I could see it, the, room, the room changed a little bit. But then I, I got them into small groups, and uh, groups of four, and gave them detailed instructions about talking to each other and listening to each other, and asked that they each talk about um, why they were here on the planet, and uh, what their mission was, and, and how they were doing with this mission, and if they weren't doing so good, what they were going to do about it. And, they really, I was surprised how much this, this group entered into that process. And about an hour later after they all, I, I went over some groups, people were crying and people were, they really got into this, like, why are you here on the planet question, became in that moment a really meaningful question. And people came back and there was just a complete, complete shift in the energy in the room. And even the people who had been sitting in the back like this were actually, I could see they were somewhat relaxed. Um, they were, their, their arms were down, their faces had changed. And then I left, I walked, I walked out of the room and people told me that the, they, the rest of the retreat went really, really well and that they needed to do that at the beginning. That that's what, the missing piece was that they hadn't connected to each other. That they, they just thought they were just gonna completely go and make things happen. Well, I want to introduce myself. I'm Mark Lesser, and I'm the founder and CEO of a coaching and consulting company called ZBA Associates. And the name of the company, it's named after a book that I wrote called ZBA Zen of Business Administration that was published a few years ago by New World Library. 
and it's um, really about my, my attempts to integrate Zen practice and business practice, which has really been kind of my, my life purpose and, and mission. Um, I took a, a one-year leave of absence from Rutgers and came you know, in New Jersey, came to the West Coast, and then spent um, 10 years living at the San Francisco Zen Center. And during my, uh, during my 10th year, I was director of a monastery and resort called Tassajara down, sounds like some of you are familiar with Tassajara. And I, I surprised myself by uh, waking up one morning, this was my 10th year of Zen Center, I was running Tassajara, and I realized that though I thought I was a Zen monk, that actually I was running a business. And, and I, I loved the two things, and the two things seemed not only not to be in conflict with each other, but there were tremendous um, synchronicities. And so, of course, from there, I proceeded to go to business school. I got an MBA degree at New York University and came back and then spent um, about 15 years starting, running, and growing a greeting card and calendar company called Brush Dance. And um, since I, for 15 years, I was a, I felt like a big part of my job was I was a professional quote collector. I thought I would kind of start this, um, this talk with a quote, which is, this is a, actually a quote from a, a friend of mine's um, book. And the quote says, industrious people create industry, lazy people build civilization. Right? Industrious people create industry. Lazy people create civilization. And a little bit of context, what I mean by laziness, this particular person who said this is currently, um, he's in the middle of about five different books. He's one of the world's most um, leading translators, calligraphers, writers um, of um, translating Buddhist texts. And he does workshops. He travels around the world. But yet, there's something, there's something in his way that he, uh, he really exemplifies for me this whole notion of accomplishing more by doing less. There's a kind of real um, ease and relaxedness to, in, his, in his way of being. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so these images, I was thinking of, in a way, right, even the word, the word lazy and the word in, industrious brings up um, a sense of imagery. And, you know, and we, all, we all are, in a way, we all are our stories. We all are the images that we, that we tell ourselves about who we are and what we're doing. And usually, um, we, don't make those, you know, we don't make those images so clear or apparent, and yet those images and ideas kind of drive us. For example, um, I was with a, a coaching client the other day, and this woman started off by saying, I've got a horrendous day tomorrow. I've got a 7.30 AM meeting. This was, um, I was on the phone with her in Los Angeles. And she was describing from one meeting to another to another. And, and I, I just kind of stopped her and said, so it sounds like you are planning on a horrendous day tomorrow. Um, could, could you perhaps, would it be possible to change that story? Like, why, like I mean, you might, you might have to cancel one of those meetings, like that one meeting that ends at 8, and you're going to be across LA at 8.30 for another meeting. You're, you're just completely setting yourself up for a horrendous day. Is that, is that really your plan? That's the, that's the story that I, that I hear you telling. And the image that I, I suggested that maybe she try some other images. Uh, for example, there's the image, one of the images I like a lot is the image of a river and seeing your life more like, more like a river. And that your job, your job in that image is that you're like steering a boat on a river and deciding when you want to be in the deep currents, when you want to move quickly, and when you need to move more slowly, maybe when, when you need to kind of eddy out, when it's time to, to rest. The other, another image is I think business people can learn a lot from athletes. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, some, of the, some of the similarities that I see and some of the ways that are useful from athletics in business. I, I was, this was actually something that really got me on this, this path, this um, 
self-awareness path and spiritual path was one of the first things um, that brought me was I was captain of my high school wrestling team back in Colonia, New Jersey. And one of the things that I noticed was that good wrestlers seemed to, um, they, they were really strong and quick, and they put a tremendous amount of effort into what they did. But the, the best wrestlers, there was, something, there was something that I was trying to understand about that the wrestlers that were the state champions there was something odd. or some, they, they didn't seem to care about winning and losing. There was a way in which there was a, an effortlessness. And another image around um, athletes is that, you know, like I think about um, tennis players, They're, that, you know, tennis players play really, really hard during points. But in between points, they, they have a way of resting. In fact, the the top tennis players, it's been shown that they actually lower their heart rates by 15 or 20 percent in between, in that 15 or 20 seconds in between points. Whereas most people in business don't see, don't <coughs> see that there's any need to take any kind of rest at all. People in business think that they can just go full out all the time. And this, this I think, pr has proven to be very unproductive. So one, one way to one very easy way to accomplish more by doing less is to find ways to oscillate your energy and stress level during the day. So I, I don't think stress is a bad thing, but constant stress is, is a bad thing, not only for your health, but also for productivity. I want to talk about, um, well, there's, you know, my, my assumption is that you know, that we're, we're born into this world to accomplish things, and that our bodies and minds come pre-installed with amazing equipment, not only for abilities like language, mathematics, science, but also we're born with the ability to read the energy of other people, to feel the joy and pain of others. You know, laughter is actually contagious. Um, focus and energy are contagious. Innovation and creativity are contagious. And also um, fear narrow, and narrow-mindedness are also contagious. And so one, one way that I think about framing this talk and this idea of accomplishing more by doing less, it's about how, how to be a warm-hearted, effective leader. A warm-hearted, effective leader that this is really um, how we can accomplish the most, because everything we do is always with, um, always with other people. Very high tech. Um, <laughs> but this is, um, this is a model that, that I want to talk about. And you know, it doesn't matter if you can't read it. I'll, I'll describe it pretty fully. Um, but this, this is a model that I think of as a way. These are, these are all about ways, ways to do less and accomplish more. And so this, this, bottom, this bottom rung, so this, this is something that goes from the bottom up. And you can see there's more, more space here on the bottom. So the first, um, the first layer on this rung says awareness and meaning. And I would add love to that, awareness, meaning, and, and love. And, and in order to be aware and in order to find meaning, it, it isn't about adding something. It's about not complaining. It's about not comparing. It's about not diffusing your energy by making up all kinds of stories about who you are and what, you know. But, but it's about finding some ways to drop down into, into just being aware, like just appreciating your breath. So this is, this is one of the reasons why I think a meditation practice and mindfulness practice and ways of stopping and slowing down are so important in our day-to-day -day lives because it, it, it's a way to bring that awareness, appreciation, meaning, and, and love into, into our lives. And I think the, the story that I told about working, facilitating that meeting of CEOs, what shifted it was bringing, bringing people down into their own awareness level and suddenly, and, and talking very specifically about meaning, right? I asked them, why are, why are you here? 
on this planet? What, you know, what, what are you meant to be doing? And how are you doing it? So it, it, dropped, it dropped them into a sense of meaning. And again, it didn't feel like it was about, it wasn't like they needed to add something. They were, all, they were already into all this noise. So it was about somehow stopping the noise and dropping down. So it was really taking away, taking away the noise level drops you down into a sense of meaning and appreciation. And then the next, uh, the next level up is, is about working with other people, is about trust and resonance. It's about how, how we, you know, I mentioned earlier that, we, that we're born with this ability to read other people's energy and how contagious all of these different feelings and emotions are. And, and again, it's not, a, it's, it's not about um, having to add those and having to figure out things that we do. It's somehow taking away all of the, the extra noise and ideas that we've added on that have covered up this very natural, very powerful ability that we have, being quiet enough to notice. I mean, I think when you walk into a room, you can feel, you can feel the energy. You can feel what the energy is. And, you're, and the, way, the way you are, the way you show up, will, will impact that energy in the room. The way you are, like even seeing the, you know, when you're with another person and having the con a conversation with another person, what's, what's the space in between you and this other person doing? Is it, is it separating you or is it connecting you? What's, what's the body language telling you? How are, how are you being? How are you being as a leader? Are you helping other people to feel their own sense of ability and power and joy? Or are you somehow dampening or, or blocking? And just really being aware, more and more aware of, of letting go of the things that cover up your ability to be um, a real, a manager with trust and, and resonance. The third, uh, the third level up is about developing vision and clarity in what you do. Vision and clarity. And one, um, and again, this is, this is about, you know, this doesn't have to be effortful. One example that I think of, and this is also from this is from athletics also, and this is very specifically about um, the practice of envisioning, being clear about what it is you, you want to accomplish, what it is you want to do. This particular example is about a, an Olympic um, diving champion who, um, just before the Olympics, she broke her foot somehow practicing, and it was, it was assumed that there'd be no way that she could compete competitively because she wouldn't be able to practice. But she, with her coach, developed a way to practice her diving in her mind. She practiced over and over again, just envisioning what these dives were, how she was going to do it. And she went on to pull up a tremendous upset and win the gold medal in the Olympics. And there's real power to actually letting yourself um, think about and imagine what what is it you know what is it that you what is it that you want to accomplish what what actually is it and to envision it and see you know what are the steps that you need to get there um, what is the this is about you know developing a a life plan developing a business plan and and again for most of us um, we get we get so wrapped up in being responding to everything. It's a little bit like, I mean, this, this piece here is a little bit like you know, making sure that you spend more time doing things that are um, important and not always you know, acting in that, in that urgency quadrant of this is dropping down and knowing, having a vision of what it is you want to do. Um, routines and structure is, is what I have as the as the, um, the next part of this, um, this graph. And um, you know, in a way, this routines and structure, there's some very, what I think of very obvious things that fit in this category. I would put a daily meditation practice in, as a routine. Um, you know, it might mean that you have to replace the Starbucks routine, or, you know, it's, or maybe a little, you know, a little less in both, or maybe every other day, a meditation practice. Um, 
a uh, you know 30 minutes of exercise and some ki- and some kind of um, some kind of routine about about actually getting exercise. Journal writing I would put in as a terrific um, routine, and and um, you know structure. Structure is a really important, um, a, a really important point in, as a way, you know, in, of of doing less and allowing yourself to accomplish more. I mean, one of the things about a, a that I like about this word routine and this idea of routine is that once you establish it, it doesn't require any doing at all. Like, I don't have to think. I don't have to think about where I'm going to be at 6.30 in the morning. I know I'm going to be sitting in my office on the cushion. I don't have to think about it. It's, real, it's actually really um, quite a relief to have that kind of routine. And I don't have to think about exercise so much because I, I have it on my schedule. And when it says it's time to go for a walk, I, I go for a walk. It's pretty nice. Um, and a, a, an example I think of, uh, this was a, um, this was a, a CEO of a small media company that I was coaching. And somehow I could see that he was, um, this was, he was in a high growth phase. And he was feeling a lot of stress. And I could see, I could see that a lot of his stress had to do with um, his cash flow and his cash situation in this business. And I asked him um, how he measured cash flow. And he said, oh, I measure my cash flow by how much my chest hurts. And I, I thought, this is, this is really interesting. And I, I asked if he ever thought of act creating a, a cash flow projection. And he said, I don't have the time for that. So um, we sat down. Actually, I sat down with him. And in two hours, we had a really detailed cash flow projection for his business, which having, just having that structure totally changed the way that he looked at his business. Taking, taking that, he was running around just feeling, you know, as I said, he measured, he measured his cash flow by how much pain. And I think if you think about what, what in your life do you measure by how much pain you feel about it? Um, what, what, what could be solved by putting some kind of structure or some kind of routine uh, into, your, into your life that would make a real difference in what you accomplish? And then this next, um, next up in this, um, this accomplishing more by doing less graph is innovation, creativity, and, um, and chaos. And this is really, this is really about um, kind of less, less settling, right? Less settling for what's mediocre. Or there's a, there's a word that sometimes, um, it's kind of a, a made up word called um, satisficing, right? And this is a, a warning of what not to do in the world of creativity. So don't, don't settle for things don't, that suffice. Don't settle for things that just um, satisfy. That this is to, to allow for there to be some sense of unknown, some, some sense of um, chaos and, and innovation. And, and again, I think we're, we're all tremendously uh, creative, innovative, um, beings, and it's and it's allowing, it's allowing ourselves to kind of drop down into that space and and seeing how uh, how dangerous it is that you know we we usually you know we usually like to tell safe stories and predictable stories and and we don't even kind of realize it so it's finding finding ways to push ourselves s- slightly out of our comfort zones and into um, into a little bit of um, that chaos world. And I know I, I, I talked here a couple of months ago, and I, I talked about how, for me, taking improv classes was a big way to do that. And actually, I find, um, in some way, you know, just getting up in the morning and going to work is, um, you know, I, I, never, I never know what I'm going to find when I, when I sit down with, you know, with a coaching client or if I walk into a, to a group that I'm facilitating. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I love about um, love and sometimes dread about this kind of work with people is that you just never know what you're going to find. And, and I think all of these things, you know, starting, starting down here with um, awareness and building up to trust, vision, routines, chaos, and innovation, um, all, all lead to a sense of accomplishment and, and results. And, 
And the thing that I would suggest that um, that top line is about is you know, less, less effort. That, that again, it's not, um, you know, there's that, uh, there's a, this famous quote, I think it's a Mark Twain quote, right, where he says, you know, having, having lost sight of our goals, we redouble our efforts. So, so this is, um, you know, this is for, for so many people, and I, I see it in so many places, that, that there really is a, a culture of busyness and a culture of doing. And so this is really a, a model for uh, changing, changing that culture and bringing our business lives and our lives into a, into a higher plane, into a, different way of, into a different way of being. And really, all of this, this isn't so much about, I mean, there, there are many, many uh, practices that could be done within all of these. There are many ways, many very concrete ways to practice with these. But it's not so much about technique. It's really about a way of being, a way, a way of, of living in the world. And one way that I, would, that I would describe this way of being is to make your life a laboratory, right? To, that to see that your, that your life is really the, the place to experiment and to, to pay more and more attention to you know, what is it that gets in your way? Where, how do you get triggered? What are your, what are your sore points? That, what, what are the patterns that over and over again um, get in your way? Where, where, do you, where do you over and over again find that you're um, complaining about something or worrying about something? And, and um, so it's, it's really kind of shifting, sh shifting into this, I mean, so, when you, when you shift your life into this um, sense of way of being, you can, you, know, you can appreciate your worrying. It's like, oh, look, I'm worrying. Isn't that interesting? What's, what is that worrying about? And so it's not about pushing those things away, um, but it's about really noticing. And, and the, more, the more that you notice these things, somehow this, this, um, this shifts what's possible and shifts to new possible ways of being. I'm going to stop there. And I want to ask that you turn to someone next to you. Find someone who's next to you. Can you guys all get in pairs? This is, this is the good part. This is where you, you talk. You know, because you know, real, real learning comes from what you, what you say. So we're going we're gonna to just spend a few minutes having you guys talk. Does everybody, everybody found a partner? Great. Um, well, here's first a, a little bit of instruction. Um, I'm going um, to give a, um, a, a suggested question. And then you're each going to get just like, I think, three minutes each. And I'd like during that time for the person who's talking to just be able to talk um, uninterrupted and the other person to just listen. This is rare. This is really a great gift in our culture. And the other thing that's rare is that um, you don't have to look good here. You don't have to look smart. Um, you don't have to look smooth or like you know what you're saying. You might even be a little surprised about what, about what you say. And if you're the person listening, um, don't be preparing. Just listen. You know, you'll notice. You'll, you will, I mean, you're probably all preparing right now, even though I haven't even asked you what anything. Um, but, you know, it's so, it's, it's so potent to be prepared and to want to look good. And so let's, let's see if we can um, be, curi be a little bit more curious. So the question that I'm going to pose for each of you to talk to the other person about for three minutes is, um, What's, um, what's something that you do that's extra, that, um, that if you were to stop doing would make a big difference in how much you get done in your life? What's something that you should, that, what's a thing that should probably be at the top of your not to do list? Things, things that you probably, that you do now that if you were to stop doing would make a big difference. And this can be, you can take this, 
literally in terms of something that you do. You could take it as something intern something that you do, some process. Or you could talk about anything you want in your three minutes. Because I'm just this is a suggestion. You might have something burning, some burning issue that you just want to get out for for three minutes. Um, let's see. I don't have a watch with a second hand, so can someone be a timer? Yeah? So, um, so just decide who's going to go first. And whoever's going to go first, you've got three minutes. And, I'll, and I will, um, I'll ring a little bell at the end of three minutes. To, um, I'm not sure what <laughs> camera they're on right now, but <laughs> so I'll I'll just leave this up here for you right now. Terrific. So when you want to use it, I'll man the board there. So everything. So once as soon as you start using it, like right now you're muted. <laughs> Okay, so the first person should stop and the um, second person can start. And you've got the second person will have three minutes also. No, this is fine. I can, I can go with it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks. The user interface is smarter than So, so yeah, I'm going to start with the basic um, I'm going to take my day off. Anyway. Okay, if you can all finish up. I realized one thing I didn't say at the beginning is that um, I'm a coach here at Google, and there's a coach. This and this talk is part of the Google coaching program. And and Meryl Blanchard, I wanted to thank, who's the person who is making the Google coaching program possible. So thank you. We have a few minutes. If anyone wants to talk about how that was or ask me anything, or make any comments, questions at all. Please. Oh, I, we have a mi microphone. Thanks. So um, I really liked what you said about awareness and meaning, and then trust. And I had a question. So um, I've had an experience where you, know, you walk into a room, and you kind of connect with people, sort of uh, it's going to sound very new agey, but sort of energetically, you know, you have a good feeling about the room or the people that you're with. And then, so you, so you feel good and everything is right. And then there's this one person that sends you into judgment and like negativity. And, you know, so you get, you get to the place where you have awareness, love, and meaning, right? So I'm all happy with everything. And then I connect with people. And then it, there's one annoying person. Mm -hmm. So what do you do about the one annoying person? You hit the, and eject, the eject button. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it may just be, I mean, I realize it may just be annoying for me. It might be just triggering one thing for me, and other people are completely and totally fine with it, you know. But it changes the energy of the room for, for me. So, so what do you do when you have that annoying person? Suddenly I don't feel connected anymore. I don't feel trust. And I know I'm not being aware and loving. So. Great. Great question. Okay. Well, I think, I think the question is, or the distinction is, like, like, what's really happening in that situation? So, I mean, I would generally advise to start by, right, as you suggested, perhaps, perhaps there's a way that you're being triggered. What, what is happening in you? you know, but also, what you're, I mean, you, you, you gave somewhat limited information. Like, so is, is this person acting, are they? Being critical of other, or is it is it, if it's just is it just the vibe? What is the style? Let's say that they have this talking style that irritates you. Right. Yeah. So that. Right. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, Maybe mine's irritating somebody right now. Yeah. I mean. Um, yeah. So that, you know, that that reminds me of, you know, I was in a when, when I was um, um, running my um, greeting card company. There was. You know, I, I often, you know, people often would say how, you know, 
how's, how's business? How's my company going? And, and the real answer was generally, um, it was all great. I loved it, except for the people. Um, um, but I can remember a specific situation in which um, I think my sales manager and my office manager were con like, they just, like, they just bugged each other. Like, and I, was, I spent a lot of time trying to get them to get along, because it was important. And I remember having, bringing my sales manager outside and having a conversation, and she was all heated. And at some point, she blurted out, but she reminds me of my mother. And, and um, but that, I mean, in a way, that was huge. I mean, we all, you know, this is another, it's, it's a dirty little secret about the business world. We bring in our total lives. We bring in our total lives to um, who we are into our work here. That everything we learned from our parents, anything, you know, we're all imperfect, incomplete, messy human beings. And we bring it, and we bring it all into it. So yes, we walk into a room. It's great. One person bugs us. So if we, I think what I was talking about as, a, as seeing our lives as a laboratory, then the question is, what, what's, what's going on? I mean, what's going on in me? I mean, the, I think the way to deal with it is, what is happening in me that's, that is ha making me have this reaction? And, um, and then perhaps, again, I guess depending on what happens, I could imagine having a conversation with this person and, and say, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I, I, don't know, I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm having this reaction here. I, I don't know what it's about. Can you help me with this? Or, I, mean, I mean, that would be interesting to really kind of come out and really work on it. And ask, I mean, this would be a huge risk. It depends on what this person's position is. And, you know, but, but, I, but in general, I think anything we can do to um, be curious, go into, but again, usually it's, usually, and usually it's all about them and what, what can they do to change. And if they only did that, and, and generally, in a, you know, in, it'd be great you know, in, in any room of people, it'd be great if you could see you know, the bubbles of what they're really thinking. And, and often, it would be, it'd be quite, um, quite surprising to see how bugged everybody is, or why, you know, why did they say that, or I wish they weren't on this team, or, or, or they remind me of someone. Or, so this is, this is great territory. So thank you for that question. Other questions, comments? If you could use the microphone, please. I, th I thought these ideas of uh, um, the pyramid were very interesting. I guess the one that I want to focus on is the chaos and in innovation. Mm -hmm. And it seems like for me that uh, sometimes makes me le less productive. Like I say, here's a bug. Oh, this is really a design flaw. Let's redesign this whole package. And first of all, it takes longer. Second of all, it breaks things. Or I'm approaching something. I say, oh, well, everybody does it this way. But really, it would be better to do it this way. And then down the line, I realize why everybody was doing it the other way in the first place. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like sometimes you can take this chaos and innovation too far. I would agree. Yeah, I mean, right. So, I mean, I think, I mean, this is, um, you know, that's this particular one is is somewhat of a, somewhat of a wild card in that in that you you don't know, but you know if you if you stay in that safe range, you do know. You know you'll 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 know that not much is going to happen. So, I mean, you, I think um, a a big thing in there. I think there's two two maybe contrasting pieces. One one is kind of trusting your heart and trusting your own vision and and really you know, pushing forward and pushing out those edges. And the other competing um, activity is getting feedback from other people and, being, and, and listening so that, so that you know, that's knowing if the other, other people and that feedback can help you from wasting too much time. So it's a little that tension, having both of those things working well. Are there any specific techniques you use to um, not lose sight of your goals? <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, just have just having goals is a big one, like just like just having goals and and having enough discipline to actually look at them. Like I find it, um, 
I mean, I'm surprised, you know, um, how many people don't, you know, don't do it. It's hard. It's, I think they're, they're often, um, you know, holding, holding yourself accountable is a really big thing and, and hard for a lot of people because for a lot of people, they feel like, well, they're get, what if they fail? Like, what, why, why have these goals? So, so I mean, this is something, um, you know, I was, just, I was just with a coaching client, and I said, oh, by the way, what, what are your goals for the first quarter? What, what, are, what, are, what do you want to accomplish? And this was both, um, this person was CEO of a company, and this was like, what, what are the goals? You know, when, I'm, when we're sitting here in three months from now, what, what is it that you want this company to have moved forward? And then what do you want to have moved forward? And then what do you as a leader want to be working on that we can, that we can measure how you're doing as a leader? So in this particular case, this, this particular leader um, has, trouble with, has trouble with conflict, tends to avoid conflict. So a goal was to not avoid conflict and to engage even in things that were difficult and to actually kind of keep track of, of doing that and start noticing those things. So, um, and I, f I find for me, like in, in my business, I, I have you know, just having um, monthly you know, projections about customers and about finances, and then at the end of the month, looking to see, you know, how'd I do? It's, I mean, there's a, way, um, there's a way in which business can be you know, a game. You know, and to treat it to treat it as a game, but you have to know, you have to keep track of the score, right? So the the score is what things you're accomplishing, and, and have and have cert, and have a list of goals that you want to do, and then a way, some disciplined way of measuring them over over time. So, thanks. Any other comments, questions, ideas? Great. Oh, we have one. Do you want to get the mic microphone? Maybe the last question, and then we'll stop. Uh, yes, in the second, uh, second top item, chaos and innovation, I got a good picture of <clears throat> what you were talking about, about innovation, but less of what the chaos is doing there. <laughs> Yeah, a chaos. I think chaos is about being able to step outside of your usual story. Or it's funny. I went. Um, I went last Sunday morning to this um, a two-hour um, dance class, in in which it was um, part of this um, type of dancing called Five Rhythms Dance. And in the and in the center of it, they pra part of the practice is what they call chaos, and it's about noticing. Noticing how every person, you get into a rhythm of moving. You get into a rhythm of dancing. You get into a place where it's comfortable. And there you are, doing the same thing over and over and over again. And, and that's kind of, for most of us, our lives are a lot like that, right? We get triggered by the same thing over and over. Or we, we kind of think in these same patterns over and over. So chaos is experimenting with doing it differently, seeing if you can do it differently. You know, put your watch on your other hand for for the day. See how see how that feels. Um, notice, try you know, try getting dressed differently in the morning. See if like there's usually there's so many things that we pay no attention to that we just do over and over again in the same way. So so chaos is is shake is shaking that up. Is 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 acknowledging that those pa those patterns. You know the way the way that we talk, the way that the assumptions we make, or, um, or like even that you know the question about the person who bothers us that 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 we do that every day. You know, for years we go into that meeting and that same person like so to sort of to try ways to shake it up. That's what I mean by chaos. Thank you all very much. It's been a pleasure being here at Google.